150. Wow. Damn. I can't believe it. That is a Still here. lot of episodes. I know. We were just talking about last night how we're like, it's kind of weird to us that there's people out there who've listened to at least 150 hours of us just like talking about at least. stuff. I mean, it's really probably way more than that. It's probably like two or 300 hours. Oh, but. yeah. Days that's worth. That's wild. Yeah. Days worth. Yeah. That's days and days worth. Well, of. big thank you to all of you who have, you know, supported us and watched the show for that long. Yeah. And gotten us to this point. I mean, wow. Here we are. 150 episodes later. Yeah. I mean, we're just Started we feel in our so basement. Lucky to be doing And now we're this. in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh we're <God>. downgrading. <laughs> it's a nice garage, though. It is. It's a nice garage. <gasps> yeah. It's a great garage. And who knows where we'll go? We're looking at that. new studio options oh. eventually. So we'll see. Sneaky people. You're going to keep taking it a mile higher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> always. Always. But it feels other- so weird for me not wearing my headphones today. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm, I'm not, weird. It's yeah. weird just talking to you without them on. I know. I feel like naked. It's <laughs> very weird, but I'm not wearing them because I I'm, I just got veneers and my, I'm like getting used to talking with them. It's really weird to have new teeth um, and they're wax right now because you don't get the actual veneer put on until later. They're temporaries. So I'm having trouble talking and my saliva is getting a little bit everywhere. And so <laughs> It's kind of hard to do a spitty. podcast like this, but it's going to be like this for a month. So I can't just, I don't want to take a month off. So right. I'm just not going to wear my headphones because it's bothering me so much to hear the little differences in my voice, which most of you hopefully won't notice it that much, but no, it's, it's going to really bother me bad. more. And if I hear it myself, it's going to drive yeah. you crazy. Yeah, it's going to drive me crazy. That but, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But the other bit of exciting news we wanted to share with you all is that our oh yes brand new business Yes. Higher Love Wellness. Our wellness company. Is now officially open. It is open for biz. You can head to higherlovewellness.com to check it out and see what products we offer. Yes. And Lots of good stuff. Yeah. We're, we're so excited about this. We are so happy with the feedback from you guys from our announcement. You know, you guys really understand why we're doing this, why we believe so much in CBD and um, you know, want to see us kind of take on the CBD world. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about it for so long that just felt like a natural business pathway for us. I mean, it's something that we've Mm -hmm. always talked about would be, Oh, that'd be so cool. But yeah, to make this dream a reality has just been the, one of the most amazing things. I mean, it's been a ton of work. Like I I'm not going to lie. I feel pretty frazzled right now. Like we're recording this (laughs) a few days before Mm -hmm, this launches and I've just been like, you know, working around the clock it feels like trying to make sure everything falls into place in time and stuff it's just been it's been wild and then on top of that to then come and do you know i do two podcasts lights out and mile (laughs) higher so it's just been crazy chaos but fun and exciting like it's been such a exciting couple of days getting to tell everyone about this because we've had this as you know kind of a secret for a couple years now so i'm just so excited to see it in person and i can't wait to have you know, pictures of people yeah. with our products in their hands. And I'm just so proud of what we created. I truly am. These products are incredible. And I'm so excited that, you know, we feel so good about what people are going to receive. Yeah. Like yeah. what they're actually going to get to, you know, consume Experience. and use. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know a lot of people are new to CBD and I'm, I think our products are a great place for people to start. Your brand has like r- true transparency in the sense mm-hmm. of like, if you need if you're like not familiar with this world of hemp and cbd that Mm -hmm. this is such a great like place to start because you're like even your website is so educational like if you guys are you know not familiar with cbd is like go on their website and you can read about it and read about their specific products and how their stuff is flavored and why it's it's so good because there are so many cbd brands out there that it kind of Mm-hmm. I feel like it can get really overwhelming, especially in states where weed isn't legal. Yes. Like I have some family members that live in states and they, you know, that where weed isn't legal and they'll ask me like, well, where do I even start? Because there's so many different options for yeah. CBD and it's hard to like direct them to a really good company that has like good products across the board. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's what you guys like actually brought. So cool. That where you actually can know where it's from exactly. as well. You know, we're doing this right here in Colorado. We have a farm here in Colorado, a small, yep. like three acre farm. Very small. So mm-hmm. like our batches are really, really small. So it's, yes, we, we decided to take the approach of we want to have the highest quality, mm-hmm. you know, best, you know, highest amount of potency possible 
uh, and have full transparency through the process and make sure that we understand where our products are coming from and how they're made and where they're made. And how they're flavored. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. They're flavored all naturally with terpenes, which is super cool. It makes everything taste so, so much better. It does. I love the taste of all our CBD products. I'm like really happy with it. I like flavoring. to say it's literally the freshest shit it's out there. Super, like it's super fresh. It's, like we're, we're even making sure that like we're waiting to the very last minute to actually make mm -hmm. the actual product itself mm -hmm. because we want it to be as fresh as you possibly can get it. I feel like so, so often with other brands out there, you know, with their, you know, CBD, like you sometimes you get shelves. it and it ends up, yeah. you're just like, Ugh, this is like the Sail. tinctures like got separated, the oil got separated mm -hmm. from the, the rest of it. And it's just doesn't taste good. It's not enjoyable. And so we're hoping that yeah, our you first all batch is going to be made to order pretty much you know pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so. as fresh as you can get for cbd for sure we're super proud of how everything turned out so, so with that like because we are doing the small batches there is relatively limited quantities yes. obviously we're going to restock as much as we can but with a with it being you know what it is it's going to be a much smaller quantity so if you want something you definitely want to hop over there to higher level wellness mm -hmm. as soon as you can to uh get take a look and see if you want anything so anyways i just realized that we didn't even tell everybody what our episode is on today oops we went I, straight from 150 bad. to higher love i was to... excited 150 is a big deal <laughs> but, so what are we covering today yes today we are talking about consciousness and the gateway experience also known as the gateway process very very interesting stuff that we have been getting a lot of requests to talk about and i've seen it be kind of going it's going it's gone kind of viral on tiktok yeah. and mm -hmm. tiktok's kind of reviving a lot of things that are interesting that are kind of mind-blowing that people you know a younger generation that's on tiktok might not have heard before because i mean the the gateway experience is not really a new thing and the reason why this is even being brought up is because there are some declassified cia documents uh, that were actually declassified back in 2003 but in recent years, they've kind of resurfaced as they usually do, where people are like, oh, this is, you know, they stumble across some declassified documents and they're like, oh, whoa, what is this about? And they dive into it and they're like, oh, there's some really interesting shit in here. You know, I want to make a video about it or, or put it out on YouTube or social media. And that's kind of what happened with this is the gateway experience has really kind of got second life being breathed into it with cool. the younger folks because, uh, I mean, just at a very, basic level the gateway experience is essentially a method a training program really mm -hmm. in order to train your mind and open it to a level of a higher consciousness that you are then able to have out of body experiences i mean that's really kind of the goal with the gateway experience is to get train yourself to be able to astral project to Unlock remote view potential. to do all sorts of things i mean it's you know, your, your full power, I guess you could say, yeah, it's really is what this unlocks. I'm glad people are talking about this because it's fascinating. Stuff. It really is. So that's what we're going to kind of be talking about today is, you know, what was in these CIA documents? Because there's there's actually some more information in there that they were actively researching in addition to the gateway experience that I think is very, very interesting. And in, in the past couple of weeks, we've been talking a lot about consciousness and yeah, uh, sleeping and dreaming. I mean, all of these all of these things really kind of tie together because, you know, dreaming is a mystery still. Consciousness is still a mystery. We don't really know, you know, the origin of it or where it's where it lies in the body or even if if it mm -hmm. is attached to some physical, biological, you know, thing within us or if it's something that surrounds us i mean we really don't know yeah and it seems like more and more people are interested in this than ever you know in understanding our consciousness and trying to take yourself to an, the next level i think so many yeah. people have discovered things like meditation and you know trying to connect with your higher self what does that really mean what does that look like and it's created a lot of interest in this and it's just bringing more and more people to a point of awareness where they can actually experience some of these things which is great i mean mm -hmm. that that's what we should be doing we should be striving to open our minds and and be i mean if we all have open minds i mean what look at a world with with people mm -hmm. that are all open-minded would be like i mean if mm -hmm. you think about that it's like wow it'd be a totally different society totally than it is now i mean society. we're such a divisive separated yeah. segregated group of human beings that it's just mm -hmm you know, maybe, maybe through these different methodologies and new research being done on consciousness that maybe we'll actually 
unlock those secrets that allow us to elevate our consciousness to a higher level and actually connect with one another and see you know all the commonalities that we have and that all this other bullshit is just there to separate us and it's true divide us so it is true but before we get into all that we do have a couple uh, very interesting stories for you also this episode of the mile higher podcast is brought to you by scouts honor raycon curology upstart and hello fresh so our first story is something that is probably all of our worst nightmare um, if this had been successful so last week a hacker was able to remotely gain access to a water treatment plant in oldsmar florida i didn't even know that was possible it's water you yeah. can hack water the treatment plant that puts things in the water is what they hack. So the actual machinery, the machines that actually mix in chemicals. Yeah, no, I know. But, but yeah, no, I know. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's just like, you wouldn't think that something like our water could be messed with. Well, you know, the average person doesn't think that, you know, because you've had yeah. experience with technology and hacking and everything, but the average person doesn't even think that that that's not even on our radar. No, no. That someone could hack a water plant. Mm hmm. That is some scary shit. That's like a bad movie. Well, in reality, anything that is connected to the internet can be hacked. As long as it's connected to the internet, it is hackable. It doesn't matter what device it is. So all these machinery, I mean, this machinery that they're using to treat water is connected to the internet because they need, somebody needs to be able to remotely monitor it at all times. You know, they probably have somebody, a lot of these treatment plants, power plants, I think usually have somebody there staffing it at all times to be that fail safe in, in the event of a hacker gains access to it. Cause what could happen is oh it's terrifying. God. Yeah. So in this particular case, this hacker who's still unknown, we st the police still have no idea who this person is or where, Great. where they were doing this hack from. They attempted to increase the water sodium hydroxide levels a hundred times over. And sodium hydroxide is commonly known as lye. And it's a compound used in small amounts to control the acidity of water. And in high and undiluted concentrations, it can be lethal and can eat a body tissue away. Basically, you can destroy metal. I mean, it's this corrosive chemical. So if they had been successful, which luckily there was somebody at this station that actually noticed that it was, you know, they were watching the monitor and at one point it was remotely accessed, but then when they saw their mouse start moving and somebody's going in there and jacking up the sodium hydroxide level to a hundred times over, they're like, whoa, yeah. this is, Red alert. what are they doing? What's going on? And they were able to stop him from actually allowing that to that change to go through and affect Holy all the water. Shit. Can you that imagine That a hero. Yeah. I hope they give him a nice raise right? for that. Damn. Yeah, I think the, because the hacker was like in it and then I think he like I think what happens is you tr uh, change the levels or whatever and then I don't, I don't think like immediately no. it does that I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it takes a second to like process but then the people who are watching the hacker were like watching the mouse and, like oh my god look what he did and then luckily we're seeing it happen so then they were able to like cancel it or whatever before it went through like imagine if that didn't cancel yeah <laughs> like if they were like not just not paying attention yeah. or no one was there to look at it no. i mean thankfully people are watching that type of thing but wow so wow oh my god imagine if that had gone through and what's scary is i guess this isn't that rare because like josh was saying it's really common for remote people to get on so at first when they saw them they're like oh someone's just on doing maintenance whatever yeah, and yeah. then like i guess they hopped on the again a few hours later and they thought that was weird they were like oh why are they on it again they were just on here and then they fucking did that which is crazy how like kind of easy that seems to yeah. Do. Yeah. yeah right like i i mean i don't really understand it at all how do you even go about doing something like that where would you even start yeah josh or i guess you know, there's a, well i mean the most common way that people hack is through hacking other people's user accounts so somebody could take somebody could basically so kind of the way a hacker would do this is that they would probably figure out who, who somehow gain access through somebody they know or just doing remote intelligence on this company figure out who may have an account that would have access to make the changes like that and then they target that person oftentimes with spoofing emails you know have you we all oh, get emails yeah. that are spoofed Amazon has been the one that I've seen lately. I get emails. It's like Amazon support, update your payment mm -hmm. method. 
I urgent. get that all and, the time. And it looks kind of legit just from like the quick view in your, your mailbox. But once you click into it, you're like, this you is weird. reading it. I got one from Venmo yesterday and it was like threatening. It was like, if you do not confirm your info, you will blow up oh and die tomorrow. Like, it was God. ridiculous. But I feel like it could trick a lot of people because they try oh, and make totally. it look real. And like they have the little logos. And yeah. Especially like older people. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what they'll do is they'll target the they literally pinpoint who it, who they want to target Who's they'll most find vulnerable it'll be some you know 50 60 year old guy high up in the company they'll spoof spoof an email he'll go in there he'll put in his email and password oh my god or his username and password and then boom they've captured it they'll go in mm -hmm. change his account info and then they'll go and 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 hopefully i mean and here's the other part of it too is that oftentimes uh, municipalities like city governments local governments oftentimes their it infrastructure is just lacking like it you would be just like floored at there's many of these especially smaller town situations they just don't have adequate security the servers are all vulnerable to attacks mm -hmm. like they don't have the money or yeah, resources to to protect it adequately oh that's super this town scary. was only like fifteen thousand populations so right. it's a small town but still imagine if it went and poisoned kill fifteen thousand people wipe out the whole town that if is everybody drank that water Wow. Or well, seriously all those people injured. that caught that should get raises for real because totally. that is uh, that's really terrifying to think about what could have happened. Well, I, and they say like our next big war is going to be a cyber war. Oh, uh, I don't where even think about hackers, that. you know, from other countries or groups are literally attacking our power grid. That's clearly what's going to happen though. And like our whole power grid goes down. Like imagine the whole nation without power for like an undisclosed amount of time, just no power across the entire country. I really hope that doesn't happen. Like, I mean, that what would kind be of chaos would ensue? So mm -hmm. much devastating. Yeah. Like, so many to things. the country. Oh, I, that would probably be like, like the worst terrorist attack. Yeah, one of the worst in history. I mean, if you think about it, the damage it would actually do. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be unbelievable. So that's why cybersecurity is like so, so important because everything in our life revolves around internet connected devices. I mean, it doesn't matter what job you have what you know what you do online i mean could always be taken advantage of and somebody can gain access to you know so people that hack for good are becoming like heroes in our society yeah you know? white hat hackers are what they're called what are they called white hat hackers i thought you said riot hat <laughs> sorry it's hard without my headphones yeah, no, no, no. to hear you white hat hackers. white hat hackers and then there's black hat hackers is the, is the official term so okay, a white hat is a one hacking basically they attack each other so like you go to the NSA office, they have a whole floor of, of white hat hackers that work for the, the United huh. States government that are literally attacking other other countries and, and <sighs> fighting back. Like it's a whole thing. Like you before can, you were a podcaster, that's kind of what you wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, I was do. super interested in that. I wanted to, you know, do something with cybercrime and I learned a lot about that. And it's a really fascinating world. It is. It's very complicated though, because yeah. hackers are just evolving, they're getting smarter, they're learning how to make things look virtually indistinguishable from the actual thing so it's fooling Sorry. people yeah so it's a real problem and yeah. i mean hopefully nothing like this ever does happen oh, but let's really hope not because that would be absolutely terrifying to watch it would out. oh my god i can't even imagine but the other thing we wanted to bring up and uh thanks to i forget forget who it was but somebody out there was like hey guys you guys would love to hear your thoughts on this because this is actually kind of a big deal so Back in November, uh, during the election, South Dakota actually voted an Amendment A uh, t in order to legalize all forms of marijuana, including the sale and cultivation of the plant. And this passed with an 8% margin, and it was set to go into effect on July 1st. Yeah, we um, talked about it year. on the show, I remember. Mm -hmm. When it was passed, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But, of course, a South Dakota Circuit Court judge just ruled on February 1st that this amendment to legalize marijuana violates the state constitution because they're saying basically their their defense is that they're trying to claim that the amendment a added an entirely new section to the state constitution as opposed to just modifying an existing one so because it's not just considered a revision and and it's an amendment that they have to there's like all these other hoops they have to jump jump through with the local government there in order for that to actually be instated into law that sounds like some bullshit totally right so the group that actually got the amendment on the ballot the south dakotans for better marijuana laws um, are going to court to appeal this because it's now making its way to the south dakota supreme court 
So they're literally trying to shut down a a law that was passed by the people that the people wanted, a majority of the people wanted, in order to just eliminate it. I don't really see the point because clearly we are headed to the headed in the direction of full legalization for the whole country. That's going to happen eventually, right? Mm-hmm. Why are they trying to prevent this from going through? If the people voted for it, they're going to continue to fucking vote for it. If anything, more people will come out and vote again to confirm this. Why try to slow this down? It's going to happen. Don't you want more money for your state? Right. Exactly. It's been the so fuck? good for Colorado. It really has. It's like sad to see this happening. And for I would I feel bad for everyone who voted for it, was excited. And I mean, to some people, this is yeah. medication. This is necessary. This is life changing mm-hmm. to have something like this pass and then to have it ripped away from you. It feels like where where are my rights? Yeah. What the hell? We passed this. It's voted for. It's done. It's just, like, how can this bullshit happen? Because that's the way our legal system set up. There's all these loopholes. There's all these ways to. I mean, it's an absolute mess. I mean, it really the is. whole court system is a mess. But anyways, the whole cannabis industry yeah in general well is still i believe right now us. the house uh, they already passed a a bill to federally legalize marijuana mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure mm-hmm. and yeah. so they're waiting to I bring it that. to the senate so like this is already in the works like right. there's it's gonna happen it could happen in the next couple of years so like, why are they fucking around wasting our <laughs> taxpayer dollars or south dakotans p- taxpayer dollars fighting about this and doing all this bullshit Probably because they're misinformed. They're misinformed. Yeah, they, do they not are. Under even, they don't even want it. There's a so lot of people, people especially these older judges, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they've got that old school mindset about, you know, weed and marijuana and stuff. And that's probably what they just have in their head. They still have They're rather than educate themselves on the facts. Mm-hmm. They're just going off of the old stereotypes, old stigmas, you know, surrounding cannabis. And they're sticking to that. But also, too, you never know, you know, what other interests they might have too. for all we know, they could be getting, you know, money from Big Pharma for some reason. Or, mm. you know, maybe they don't want to be the ones that are are in the court system when this is this happens. Like they don't want that on their record, I guess you could say, because mm-hmm. some politicians are like that. They don't want to have certain things <laughs> on there so that they were a part of that with the times. They approved. Yeah, so you Ridiculous. should be worried about other things being on your record. I know. Seriously. But let's go ahead and get into the gateway experience and consciousness. But before we do, I want to thank our first sponsors for today. As you guys probably know, Kendall and I have a ton of pets. We actually have a small zoo. We have three rabbits, four dogs, and three cats. So obviously that's a lot to take care of. And so we're always on the lookout for the newest and best pet products out there on the market to help make our pets' lives better. So I'm here to tell you today that our go-to pet brand for not only grooming products, but also cleaning products and anything wellness related for animals is Scouts Honor. We've been using Scouts Honor products for quite a while, even before we were sponsored by them. And I just absolutely love their products. Not only do they smell good, like the urine eliminator is absolutely amazing. I use that probably every other day, if not every day. We got a couple leaky dogs, you know, that like to mark on things. Obviously the rabbits will pee from time to time. So they're Urine eliminator spray is just a lifesaver because every time I use it, it leaves that area not only clean, but it smells great. What's also been great for one of our dogs is the probiotic itch relief, and you can use this for dogs and cats. This has been absolutely amazing for helping her skin. It's really dry. She's shedding all the time. So spraying that on her every day definitely gives her some relief from itching all the time. So all of their products really have just been amazing for our pets, and I know they will be for yours too. But also what makes Scouts Honor stand out above a lot of other pet brands is the fact that with every purchase, Scouts Honor provides one day's worth of meals for a rescue animal in need. Absolutely amazing cause to support. And with Scouts Honor, your pet will never look, feel, or smell better. Their scents are absolutely amazing. I think I love their mint one. They have like a mint eucalyptus type scent. Mm, Absolutely amazing. So check out all of Scouts Honor's award-winning products today. They're available online or wherever pet supplies are sold. But right now, you can receive 20% off your first order if you go to scoutshonor.com slash milehigher. Remember, that's scouts with a K at scoutshonor.com slash milehigher for 20% off your order. That's S-K-O-U-T-S-H-O-N-O-R dot com slash milehigher. Scouts Honor has the best natural and preventative grooming and cleaning solutions for pets around. This year, I've absolutely been hitting the gym as much as possible, probably a couple times a week. I try to get in there, get a good workout in. And the thing that I bring with me every single time I go to the gym is my pair of Raycon wireless earbuds. 
These things are amazing because they're super portable, they charge right in the case, and they're comfortable. They actually fit my ears unlike many other earbuds out there. But what I love best of all is the sound quality. The sound quality is actually amazing, especially for the price point that Raycons are at. I mean, honestly, they're definitely comparable to any of the other more expensive brands out there, but for half the cost, which is absolutely amazing. Plus, I really love that they're super discreet. They really fit inside your ear, so you can actually lay down and go to sleep with them on. They're pretty comfortable in that regard, and just, they look cool. I mean, they don't have like the little stems on them. They're in different colors. I mean, they're just really all around a stylish way to listen to audio. And they don't just look great. Raycons perform wherever you take them. They have up to six hours of playtime. They're water and sweat resistant, and it's Bluetooth. So it pairs quickly and seamlessly with your phone or other device. You've heard me say all this before. So if you still don't have a pair of Raycons, I really am starting to wonder why. Raycons is offering 15% off all their products for my listeners. And here's what you got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash mile higher. And that's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash mile higher. Get your Raycons today at buyraycon.com slash mile higher. Now, again, the reason why we're even bringing this up is because of these CIA documents, which again, actually they're not even, the documents themselves are not from the CIA. The CIA just releases declassified documents from the Department of Defense. And so the actual origin of the documents containing all this information about consciousness and the gateway experience and all that is actually for the U.S. Army. Back in 1983 is when they were doing research on this. So this is this whole method or training program for unlocking your consciousness has been around for, for a very long time. Very long time. And I, I think to just start, like to really understand why the military would even be interested in this in the first place. Because if we go back to that time period, I mean, it's not that far off from like when MK Ultra was happening. No, um, exactly. And all those experiments they were doing on human beings uh, and messing with their consciousness and and really trying to figure out you know do we have these psychic abilities do we have this ability to you know transcend ourselves and have out of body experiences and it's interesting that why would the military want to do this well why wouldn't they want to do it to that's be able true. to manipulate yeah. a mind that's true that's true you know but for what purpose to to use it against our enemies like it's I, I think that's probably a lot of it is you know espionage and spying and stuff and being if they were able to train soldiers mm -hmm. to you know leave their bodies in order to either remote view you know some other foreign enemy or you know astral project to you know i i to me it seems like the real reason for researching all this is for use in war and not necessarily just to like you know, we're going to research this to then spread all this information to the public, right? No, definitely not for <laughs> that reason. But I don't know if it's all, I think war is a part of it, but I think they have probably many more reasons for wanting this information. Um, just the idea that there is a higher consciousness, I'm sure is very intriguing to them or the idea of other dimensions. Of course, they're going to look into all of that. And they probably have been for at least a hundred years, right? These, project, these projects mm -hmm. and documents constantly come out. It's clearly still going. Imagine, I mean, this is being released from, I mean, when were these done exactly? What did you 83. say? 83. And they were released in 2003. So imagine what they've got now. Imagine what they're working on to this day. Yeah. So they've already, they learned everything they needed to learn from this, you know, this project that they did, mm -hmm. you know, into the gateway experience. And so to really wrap your head around what is classified right now is really hard because yeah. They probably are doing some absolutely crazy shit. Yeah, this is probably baby shit compared to what they are doing. Yeah, or they've mastered this gateway process. Mm -hmm. So I'm let's, sure they have. It's basically brain tuning. Yeah, it's really what it is at its basic level. It's, brain it's, manipulation, which can be very useful to you as an individual just in your everyday life. Unlocking your full power of your brain even to just study or get ready for a test something like that well yeah I guess studying and getting ready for a test are the same thing but you know what i mean like you can use these this type of method in your everyday life yeah exactly 
And I mean, the ultimate goal with it is to allow yourself to, you know, we all hear about astral projection and remote viewing and all these out of body experiences people claim to have. And mm -hmm. we're all curious if this is actually real or is it just pseudoscience? I mean, right. a, a lot of academics out there would be like, yo, you can't astral project. You can't <laughs> remote view. Mm -hmm. That's not real. There's no science behind that. But what's crazy is there actually is there's that it actually mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense when you know more about how you how you're able to unlock your brain and mm -hmm. you know tune it to a point where you're able to access these higher levels of consciousness and even other dimensions other planes of existence i mean the list goes on and on it's all really fascinating and i wish i myself have had experienced astral projection or something where i could understand it a bit more i think it would be easier to believe people's experiences because i've heard so many different stories of people's experiences with lucid dreaming astral projection you know hopping through dimensions and it's hard to believe every single one of them especially on the internet these yeah. days it's hard to just believe everybody anything. likes to say that they're you know right cosmic travelers out there and at just, the end of the day it's like when you haven't experienced it yourself it can be hard to believe something or to truly understand it if you've never experienced it right one day i hope to experience those types of things and i think this could be a great place to start honestly yeah i mean it definitely is a, a it is a training it's program. like a fast track way to unlock your consciousness in a and way. The, so the thing with the gateway experience is that the guy who developed it robert monroe or bob monroe uh, he created like a whole institute to study consciousness um, they've been doing this since 1971 so and he's actually not around anymore but he created this whole training program basically using binaural beats is really the way that you are able to tune the frequency uh, of your brain in order to go to those higher levels of consciousness. And we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, in a little bit. But yes. the thing about the gateway experience is that and how it might differ to some other methods to remote view or astral project or just you, know, you leave your body for a second is obviously we think of drugs, right? We think mm. of different types mm -hmm. of substances. I mean, uh, you could say cannabis too, in, in a lot of ways kind of unlocks your, your consciousness a little bit. It yeah, definitely helps. So helps open you up and and help you think a little bit more clearly and freely and freely consider more possibilities that you might not otherwise and just your typical sober mind mm -hmm. so what the gateway experience so is they they didn't want to have any of that no so they advise you when doing this program that you shouldn't be you know before you start a session you're not supposed to be drinking caffeine sober you know mind. having any sort of, of drugs or anything like that too because mm -hmm. i mean i'd be like oh let's you know have a joint and then go try this but that's not yeah. how it works because you don't want anything to interfere yeah, you wreck the experiment you're able to do this all just naturally which is really cool so really the main focus of the gateway experience is to allow yourself to get to a point where you're able to leave your body mm -hmm. it really is about like exploring you know this this other plane of existence and having out of body experiences if you follow it all the way through and with time and repetition and you know completing these sessions so he basically it's like any other sort of spiritual guide out there i mean there's tons of them out there where people are like if you follow my my method and you listen to my you know tapes or, or cds that i made that this will help you so it's it's that kind of thing and i think a lot of people are skeptical about spiritual gurus that come forward and they're like you in order to achieve mm -hmm. this level of of consciousness or experience then you need to buy my you know 10 part disc set <laughs> and you know pay thousands of dollars in order to learn this and and so that's where i think some skeptics with the gateway experience kind of come out is when they say well you know how do we know for sure that this guy's not just trying to make money off of spirituality and stuff and and, we'll and that's totally understandable because a lot of people do yes and just on that fact like it's really, really hard out there. Like if you're into new age spirituality mm -hmm. and, and you're interested in this, or maybe you're just starting to get into this, maybe one of our episodes just kind of triggered something that you want to go explore more. It's, it's very hard because all of the places we like to go for information, there's so many people out there who are just fooling people mm -hmm. and spreading. I see it all the misinformation. time, misinformation, or they're just a huge problem they are just lying straight through their teeth. They have no mm -hmm. idea what they're even talking about. Straight and made up. They're coming across as like a legitimate spiritual guide or something. And it's, it's hard because, you know, when you're new to all this and I mean, even all of us at any point in time are susceptible to people that might not be, 
you know, leading you down the path of truth and they're kind of giving you things that are making you think, oh, whoa, that's crazy. But in reality is not, not real at all. And I see this all the time, you know, tons of YouTubers online. I mean, obviously there's good ones out there that really make sure you know that, you know, I don't know for sure if this is real or fact. Speculate. We're speculating about this. This is my theory, but so many people talk as if it is fact. And that bothers me when yeah. people are like, this bothers is the way to astral project. Here's how you do it. Step one, mm -hmm. fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Step two, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> then try not to go back Step to sleep. Step three, right. astral project. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Follow me for more. Yeah. So, yeah. Follow me. That Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm sure. No, it's totally hard. The internet is really hard to navigate. It's been great because it's brought us so much new information and you know brought new people to different concepts that they definitely wouldn't have heard about without the internet but at the same time yeah there's a lot of things on there that are very misleading it's hard to navigate which information is correct who is telling what are people's motives behind telling you something well, and can and it be verified yeah you know and that's why like so many i mean so many of these spiritual guides they all release books and like mm -hmm you know, DVDs I and stuff like, it's right. Very egotistical. It's like you, how do you, why are you special? Like what's special mm -hmm. about you? And then people even go even farther and they claim they're the incarnation of some like mm -hmm. real guru mm -hmm. from years. I'm a Buddha, you know, I'm Buddha's reincarnation or I'm incarnation or exactly. And I'm just <laughs> like, come on. Like, yeah, I know really. <laughs> so I just, I just say, be careful. And mm -hmm. Even with Bob Monroe, obviously with Bob, the thing with his method is that there is a lot of science behind it and to explain how this process actually works and mm -hmm. why it works and why does uh, binaural beats actually work. So we're going to talk about all of that. So when the Monroe Institute was founded, they really set out to try and figure out, you know, really study consciousness and figure out how we can achieve these out of body experiences that we've heard so much about. I mean, there's been other military projects out there that have actually been done on remote viewings. Project Stargate is one of them where literally mm -hmm. they were studying remote viewing. They had soldiers that had this ability to do it, uh, supposedly. So that would be very useful, right? Yeah. It'd be For extremely spying. useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't they want this? Exactly. So the reason why he calls it the gateway is because the gateway refers to hidden parts of reality that very few know exist. And obviously when they started up this research, back in 1970s that the military is like, hmm, what's going on over there at the Monroe Institute? You know, mm -hmm. they, you don't think they monitor all that stuff. They monitor okay. all these companies and the research that they're doing Definitely. to see if there's an opportunity for them to bring them on the inside and study it for their purposes. So that's exactly what they did. The army sent over a group of officers and scientists to go learn about this uh, Monroe's gateway experience. And that's what those CIA documents are is basically like a report of somebody in the military that went through and did all this research and training and basically reported back to their command on does this shit actually work and what's the science behind it. The first thing that you really got to wrap your head around with the gateway experiences is, is, is this whole idea that everything is not real. Like everything is not <laughs> real to, down wrap to in the that. material sense. Like a lot of the ways that, and we talked about this, I think, God, in our time travel episode, this it's weird that all this shit mm -hmm. like connects so much, but a lot of people believe that, you know, the material uni the entire universe and everything within it is actually real. It's actually, you know, you can, it's like a piece of wood that you can knock on. It's, it's got a material base to it. But when talking about the gateway experience, you kind of got to throw that completely out the window and you got to look at everything as if it's a, um, hologram, everything is generated by the per perception of the viewer does that make sense like the way that you perceive the universe is actually what it is versus it being this concrete hard thing that actually exists that's so extremely it's hard for our me mind's to projection accept. so like the way that i like to look at it is imagine our lives are not what we see you know we're not what we see what we touch all what our senses feel but it's actually what our eyes are projecting for us our eyes are projecting a movie for us that we're just watching back and we in this movie we have the ability to knock on you know this table mm -hmm. or feel things and feel each other but in the real reality of things none of that exists it's all just it's just this big 
energy field that creates this hologram, that creates this holographic reality that we exist in and that this is just being projected. And then once consciousness seizes in this body, zoom back out and we're, you know, now back a part of this whole energy field again. So are we all experiencing the same reality then? That's where I get so confused is then what if it's all just in my head? What if this is all just my perceived reality and you guys aren't even real? I was going to say, because then I feel like that goes with the argument of like, we are our our own universe, I guess. Like Mm -hmm. we are the center of our own universe. We are our own gods. Right. And we like create our own reality I don't know. It's fucking crazy. Are, yeah. are we the center of yeah. our own universes? If we see everything like slightly different, if we live everything slightly different, are we literally creating our own reality? So therefore is reality like, or, the same like, for everybody? or rather cr- reality is being created for you. Our experiences are already created for us by the holographic universe. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It is so hard to understand. So, so does each person have their own holographic universe then? No, we're all connected no. to the same one. So because that's what the main universal law is that we are all connected. Right. Yeah. All are one. One is all that whole. idea. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we clearly are experiencing all the same universe. So how can it be? That's what I always have doesn't... trouble with when people are like, you make your own reality, which I believe in. I believe in things like manifestation. And I do think we create our own realities to an extent. We can do a lot with our minds. They're way more powerful than we even understand. Hmm. But I'm like, how can we all be manifesting at the same time and creating our own realities? Because eventually our realities overlap. Like what if you want two different things? Like two people are manifesting two different realities, but they're living in the same house or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How does that work? I don't understand it. (laughs) My little human brain cannot (laughs) wrap my head well, around it you know? nobody even the smartest people on the planet can't understand yeah. this like we still don't know shit about you know especially physics like physics is one of those things that we're still like yeah. figuring out we have no idea exactly how the universe works or how gravity works or space or what dark matter is like and we're it's still, constantly changing too. yeah well so yeah how do you even keep up with depending it? on how you look at it it changes mm-hmm. which is bizarre like it's an ever changing world. So are we ever going to have the ability to actually understand it? Probably not. Probably not. Because it's always going to change. But this whole idea of the holographic universe too is that it doesn't necessarily mean that there's one universe. There could be infinite numbers of universes that are all connected to one another and so we're shifting in between different universes as well. But before we get too far out there, I want to bring it back to the <laughs> to earth for a sec. So <laughs> From a very like physical level, well, what is everything made up of? Atoms, right? Yeah. Everything we're all made up of atoms. Everything is an atom. I mean, everything is us, pretty much. If you think about it, our tables, us, everything is us. <laughs> that we're concept made of alone atoms. is yeah. like <sighs> wow. And atoms, which make up everything that is physical to us, are literally just spinning, oscillating energy grids, mm-hmm. and they're energy. They're not matter. So at the very core of everything is just energy. There is no matter energy is creates matter so and and this is interesting that even albert einstein understood this he said everything is energy match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality this is physics so he's essentially saying the law of attraction yeah i was gonna say true that sounds like the law of attraction it is and that's what's so interesting is that that whole concept comes into this gateway experience as well as manifestation at least the science behind it really makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. because basically all matter is just energy vibrating in a certain frequency range that's all it is it's all just everything's vibrating Mm -hmm. i think we forget that that everything around us is vibrating all the little atoms are just imagine if we could see that we're vibrating yeah the earth is vibrating (laughs) so literally everything yeah our entire universe vibration (laughs) <laughs> everything comes back to vibration because at the very at that molecular everything's alive. level everything's energy it's alive it's, it's energy mm-hmm. very very interesting stuff so i know i've brought this up on the show before but the schumann resonance which is this is basically when we discovered the earth's vibrational frequency and we realized that the earth itself is just like no different from us we have our own vibrational frequency we have our own energy field around us pretty much electromagnetic and the earth does as well. And so what happens if you're able to tune your vibrational frequency to match that of the earth? 
what kind of experience could you have? So that's kind of what this all ties into is, you know, we operate depending on the level of activity that we're in, we have different uh, brain activity. So our, we have the capability to do all of these things without this technology, like you're saying, or this research, um, or without psychedelics. We can do this on our own, but this speeds the uh, process up. It's kind of like a fast track right. to sync to the correct frequency versus right. having to go well, through it. You also, know. I feel like we're so poisoned by the society that we live in and like what's around us, and especially like in modern times. So I feel like even getting to that state naturally now is like as hard as it's ever been yes. because we're so like saturated and crap. That's not what, you know, this is. Earthly <laughs> shit. Stu- exactly. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean though? Totally. All this stuff, the chaotic, the chaotic stuff that we're dealing with in our mm-hmm. day-to-day lives and the environmental stuff that we, you know, go through. And I, I just feel like that's, you know, you could bring it, break it down to like fluoride as mm-hmm. simple as like hardening the pineal gland. I mean, that's a great example of yeah. how our environment behind that. is mm-hmm. really can be, you know, be really detrimental to our like open-minded spirituality, you know, touching not only environment, but just our whole society, oh, the yeah. way that Toxic. our society is set up. I mean, oh, absolutely. we're, we're all in this rat race and in the rat race, all of our minds have to be in a wakeful state. Yeah. in order for the you know cl- capitalism and globalism to exist yeah. i we mean just talked about that with the sleep episode you know right. how we probably shouldn't be working these classic work hours and work weeks because we're not sleeping in the correct way right you know we should be sleeping in small bursts if you didn't see the episode we talked about how there's research to show that napping in like two four hour segments during the day is better for us than just an eight hour stretch but that wouldn't work so well with the corporate world mm-hmm you know, right. And, it's all, hmm. it's like, how can we control them? And maybe we don't want them to sleep yeah. because that allows we, us more mm, control over mm, them. That's imagine, so true. imagine a world where everybody got eight to 10 hours of sleep a night guaranteed, whether you got that at night or you slept several times throughout the day, everybody was guaranteed to have at least eight to 10 hours of, of rest. Plus what if it's, you know, right now it's not, it's looked down upon to rest. It's like thought of being lazy and unproductive and wasting time. It is. When in reality, sleeping and rest and mindfulness is one of the most important things to our well-being. So why, like, what if we could turn per- the perception in society of like, instead of being like, oh, you're lazy because you're putting, you know, sleep as a priority. It's like, oh, you're actually being really productive while you're in this state of mind. Mm-hmm. And therefore it like, you know, can propel you to more success down the line if you're able to like stop and in the, be present in the moment, focus on Being the clear. here and now, because there's so much research that proves that that is like so important to us. And just this rat race, like Josh, that we're like busy, mm. busy, 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 go, go, go. And then we're looked down upon and it's frowned upon to like take breaks, take a vacation, take a nap, prioritize take your a, mental right. health in any way. Right. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. yeah. And if we all slow down enough to make sure we like you said prioritize those things we would be functioning so much better as a society imagine if everyone even felt comfortable taking 10 minutes out of their day to meditate yeah mm-hmm. yeah every day like mm-hmm. society would be at so much of a higher point i truly believe that if people were taking times to check taking time to check in with themselves yeah and get in tune with their yeah. And Their it's not brain. just like, I feel like so many people out there are still even skeptical about meditation. Oh, They're yeah. just like, oh, meditation is some new age bullshit that, you know, doesn't work. It's, it's not. But it's really not. There's tons of science so behind helpful. it because we can we can track brain waves of mm-hmm. people that are meditating. And what what we've found is absolutely astounding. We've found that, you know, when you go from so there's different types of brain waves. There's delta, theta, alpha, and beta and gamma. And typically during the day when we're working and stuff, our brain is in the beta, our, our brain waves are beta, uh, which is between the 14 and 40 hertz range of frequency. And that's where you want to be when you're like trying to focus, you're getting a project done, you're right. studying, you know, you, you have to get shit done. That's right. the get shit done uh, mode. mode. Exactly. But it kind of cuts off your creative side and you're more in sync side right your left brain is really in control at that point so yeah let's talk about that for a sec because that's kind of interesting is Mm -hmm. this whole concept of hemispheres in the brain like i feel like a lot of people don't even know that there's two hemispheres to it there's a left and right brain well i mean hopefully people know that i don't remember learning about that in school really no you didn't know there was two hemispheres not for a long time i think you were texting in class during that part 
has. Oh, really? How would you know this? <laughs> I think everyone knows there's a left and right hemisphere, right? That are, I mean, that's, you learn that I actually in basic probably biology. Did. I just probably didn't pay attention. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, like your left brain is yeah. the analytical, the logical side of it. That's, you know, the analytical thinking, mm -hmm. language, numbers is all done on that side of the brain. And then on the right side, you have, you know, your creativity, emotional intelligence, you have expressions, uh, you have imagination, basically just like the creative side. And this is referred to sometimes as sometimes as your inner child. Right. So like left is the adult version mm -hmm. and right is the childlike mm -hmm. side of your brain. Have you ever been told that you're right or left brained before? Mm -hmm. No. You no one's ever no said one's that ever to you? No one's ever said that to me. No one's like, you're left brained. Really? Oh, I've like always been told this by multiple teachers. Maybe because I have ADHD, so they kind of explained it to me that I folk, I run more from my right brain. My mom would always talk about how me and you are right brained. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, I believe that's this, I think there's some debate about whether or not you can be I don't yeah. think dominant you can. It's on not. one side. No, it's, it's not a real thing. No. It's just my mom would always say that to me. So I thought, oh, I'm right brained. But yeah, as I've gotten older, I realized you use both sides of your brain. What does that <laughs> even mean? Like yeah. maybe you're right brain dominant. You tend to use your right side of your brain more often or that's the side that, clicks the best for you is what people mean by that. But yeah, you don't just use obviously. But maybe side. that's maybe it has nothing to do with the brain at all. And maybe that's just your personality your mm -hmm. your who you right. are, your soul, whatever you want to yeah. call it. And maybe mm -hmm. that's actually what's because to me, I think at the very at, at the innermost part of yourself is, you know, your soul, your spirit, whatever you want to call it. And that is really and to me, I've always pictured that lying somewhere within the heart. The heart to me symbolizes there's research to back that up. the soul and the heart. Yeah, we've I know we've talked about this before, too, but the heart is absolutely connected to the brain. And, and what we've found is the heart secretes hormones that the brain actually uses to receive information. So the heart actually gives instructions to the brain. It has that intelligence level of intelligence to it. So the reason why it's important to understand left and right brain is because one of the concepts with the gateway experience uh, that they actually created, it's their their name, they have it mm -hmm. trademarked, called Hemisync. Hemisync. Uh, Hemi standing for the hemispheres of the brain. And in order to achieve these higher levels of consciousness and out-of-body experiences, you essentially need to get the left and the right brain in sync with one another and working harmoniously. And the way that they get your brain into Hemisync is through the use of binaural beats. Because what that does is you've got, you know, two different frequencies of sounds that are tuning your left and right side of your brain in order to come together and work harmoniously together. It's the only way that you can actually unlock your brain's full potential and, and raise your consciousness if those get in sync. Have you ever used binaural beats before? A little bit. I, I've always just, I never really understood them and I just found them annoying. Like yeah. obviously if you go on YouTube and type in meditation uh, videos a lot of them do have binaural beats in them mm -hmm. and you know if you don't really understand the frequencies and what the frequencies actually mean it just kind of looks and you listen to you're like what are these weird sounds like yeah this is not helping me meditate and yeah. it's kind of it's definitely something you got to kind of work through and get used to before you and, and it understand it can be a little irritating at first yeah and understanding like how it's actually hap happening or helping could be really helpful i think because yeah, I first started using binaural beats freshman year of high school. I had a teacher that recommended that I listen to them while I study or while I do my homework. And they just used to annoy me. Like I just felt like like kind of agitated by them. But then if I'd listen long enough, you eventually don't hear them anymore. And I think it do it would help me focus. Anytime I'd use them like on my iPod touch, you know, old days. But <laughs> yeah, it was... I think helpful for me whenever I did use them. Like I'm surprised I didn't continue to use them into college or I haven't thought to use binaural beats at all in my adulthood, which I kind of forgot about them. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, well, and it's not some, like a lot of the meditation apps. I mean, they obviously have binaural beats, yeah. on them, but they're, it's not, it's definitely, I think more of an advanced meditation technique. I think it's, I think it's definitely mm -hmm. a little bit more, it's, you know, if you're trying to get into meditation and you jump right into a binaural beat yeah. meditation, it might either weird you out or it might just be like, okay, this is annoying. I don't even want to. Yeah. It's not really a great place to start because right. it, it is a little bit like it I can totally be annoying. It can give you a headache. A and lot of people. Bored yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, if you're, if your first meditations like feel it can, it can be hard for us to just sit down and 
be quiet even for 10 minutes. Our minds are so used to constantly running. And if you have anxiety, like clearing your mind is like the most difficult thing. So if there's not something to keep your attention grabbed, like for me, meditate when I feel very chaotic in my head, I have to follow meditation that takes me through visualizations to keep me on track and focused on the meditation. It's very easy. It's very hard um, to focus on, you know, something that's just quiet or the same thing, repetitive because it's our hard brains to just, just aren't focus on your breath, your right. breathing. Oh yeah, that's a challenge just, in itself. Just, well, especially if you've had no practice. Like, yes. honestly, it's not fair mm-hmm. to yourself to be like, "All right, never meditated in my life. Going to go ahead and sit still for thirty minutes, right? And get into this weird zone. Like, mm-hmm. that's not going to happen. You're just going to get annoyed because right. it's not going to happen. Yeah, which is exactly. okay. Like, it's not supposed to happen because we're so stimulated all the time. It's yeah. really hard to just turn that shit off. You got to practice. Is. That's why real guided challenge. meditations are so big. So is great. because it's a great place to start if it you're is. just getting into meditation. As opposed to, and we're going to actually do a a minute long theta meditation just to give you you an idea of what this actually sounds like and how it might be different from meditations you might already be doing. But the other thing I wanted to bring up about this hemi-sync, because this was like the big, this is like their big, uh, I don't know, their their golden egg. This is like their (laughs) their golden egg. The golden goose right here. This is the golden goose. So the golden goose is this hemi-sync idea they came up with and from the documents that were declassified, we found that according to the research, in order to achieve these higher levels of consciousness and to astral project and remote view, your brain's frequency needs to be, be between four and seven hertz in order for this to, to really work. And in order to do this, you need the binaural beats in order to tune your brain to those frequencies mm-hmm. through this you know, uh, tuning fork effect is what it's called ever seen a tuning fork before Mm -hmm. oh yeah you hit a tuning fork and the two sides are on different frequencies but they then work harmoniously together to create one one sound Mm -hmm. so it's it's pretty interesting because again most of the time we're between 14 and 40 hertz is what our brain waves are at so to get to that out of body we got to get that down to four to seven and it's very difficult to do and apparently this method is the way to do it so let's go ahead and listen to to a minute of a theta meditation real quick. Oh, cool. Before we play this, though, I wanted to mention that in order for this to actually work, for binaural beats to actually work, you must wear headphones that are stereo left, right panning so that you can mm-hmm. hear the individual frequencies in each ear. That's the only way that it'll work. A lot of people don't even know that and they play it on their speakers. And if you play it out <sighs> of your computer or speakers, you're not gonna, they're, it's no, not gonna work. You're not gonna get that effect. So put some headphones on for this theta meditation and also don't be operating any machinery don't be driving not that this would actually do anything. no i don't but think i think still it'll be fine. don't do the Long full length one while you do anything <laughs> obviously disclaimer <laughs> that was really relaxing really relaxing yeah because that's that's a theta that's like getting your brain into a theta uh brainwave Ooh. activity yeah i feel I was like having crazy chill. like visualizations my eyes are closed i was Me like going too. through a tunnel like <laughs> so yeah that, i kept that, seeing like, two kinda... different lights on either side oh. yeah, of my head yeah but my I eyes that was like just because i was thinking when my eyes were closed there i could just feel them like twitching like yes like doing yeah. just weird things like yeah. i was just like whoa mm-hmm. Yeah, mine started doing that too. So there's like kind of like sounds of whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. That's all of those sounds are the binaural beats at seven hertz. So this is not, this particular meditation isn't great for like trying to get yourself to that because you got to work your way mm. all the way down to seven hertz. But if you're able to do that through, you know, 
slowly but surely work your way and that's why there's different meditations at different hertz levels so that you can slowly gradually work your brain and tune your brain that's another way to to do this without using the gateway experience is that you could just start with meditations the guided ones and slowly work your way down yeah, you to seven practice. hertz to it's get like your muscle. brain to that theta mm -hmm. level because that's truly the level where you can I mean, we just after a minute of doing that, we're like, oh, that felt weird. Yeah. My whole body felt like it was mm -hmm. vibrating. Did you notice like my my internal of my my sternum right here felt like it was just kind of slightly vibrating. Interesting. It was very weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it was like you can definitely feel it. And imagine doing that for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. It How? almost felt like it was like balancing my vibrations like and mm. so I was like twitching and stuff like yeah. it was like my feet were kind of twitching. My yeah. eyelids were twitching and I feel like it was almost like the imbalance leaving my body and like slowly trying to like get, with the, get with the program right. yeah <laughs> your brain is taking in those binaural yeah. beats and it's trying to tune itself to that and it takes time and, and practice in order to do that but you know it that's why we we're feeling an effect is because yeah. we're in that beta right now obviously doing mm -hmm. the show so our in brain is mode. like whoa what right. is this i'm yeah. getting stimulated by the seven hertz now that makes me want to do that like even before bed or before a meditation. Yeah, it's good. I want to try that for longer because that felt extremely relaxing. It is. I wonder it's a what great you way to go to sleep. Felt like when you, if you did it along with us, you know, what was your experience like? Mm -hmm. Because when you're dreaming, clip? that is the state your brain is in, that theta phase. Interesting. So that is, in theory, what you're doing while you're sleeping. That's what your brain's frequency is at. So is that why our eyes move back and forth? Why we have REM? Yeah, exactly. REM cycles. Yep. It's like our it has to do with our brain yeah it's the hemi going on yeah that's interesting and and the papers in this cia do, our cia document were talking about rem cycles they looked into all that as well like this is all it's all like connected which is yeah. so so weird mm -hmm. but there's a couple other things that are big takeaways from this document but before we get into that i want to thank our last round of sponsors for today you know that one credit card that you have we all have one you're afraid to log on and look at your statement to see what your balance is. And if you've been avoiding this debt of yours, it's time to confront it. And Upstart can help you face it and finally pay that off. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt. And it's all online. Whether it's paying off that credit card, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses. Over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score, which is amazing, especially when you're first starting out. You get in trouble with some credit cards and you don't know what to do, you're drowning in debt. Upstart can help you get a loan in order to help get that debt under control and even eliminate it. And it only takes five minutes online to check to see what rate they can offer you. And Upstart offers loans from $1,000 to $50,000. And you can get approved the same day and receive funds as fast as one business day. So there's not this huge long waiting after you've been approved for the loan. So if debt is taking over your life, it's time to get that fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash milehire. That's upstart.com slash milehire. And don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you, please. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit your income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. But go ahead and check it out today at upstart.com slash milehire. You guys know that we love HelloFresh in our house, and that's because it makes it so easy to cook for ourselves. There are so many nights where we've been so busy lately, and it's really nice to just have a HelloFresh meal ready to go in the fridge, all pre-portioned so that we don't waste any ingredients and the meals are absolutely awesome. We always love our HelloFresh meals. And what's cool about HelloFresh is it's 46% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store. Plus, you get to skip the checkout lines. Some of their meals can even be made in 10 to 20 minutes, which is perfect for your busy schedule. And over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from farmers to ensure that only the freshest produce and proteins are delivered right to your door. And HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal kit, offsetting 100% of carbon emissions. And their footprint is 25% lower than store-bought grocery-made meals. So check it out at HelloFresh.com slash 10 mile higher and use the code 10 mile higher for 10 free meals. And that includes free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 10 mile higher. Use code 10 mile higher for 10 free meals. And that includes free shipping. What's also really cool that they talked about in this document was about this cushion in your skull that protects your brain called the dura or dura mater. It's like fluid. 
that's the cerebral fluid. So there's an actual like layer of cushion. It's, I don't know exactly okay. what tissue, I don't know what it's made out of exactly, but this dura, it helps support and protect it from the skull. It's kind of that layer in between. So you have the skull, you have the dura, uh, dura matter, and then you have cerebral fluid around the brain. Okay. But what's interesting is that depending on your heartbeat, so what your pulse is, how fast your heart is beating, um, this also, your heart's vibration and frequency actually travels up through your head, you know, through your spine up to your brain mm. and through those nerves. And it actually soothes the brain. Like it actually kind of vibrates that dura around your head. And that's why you feel that sensation of relaxation when you bring your heart rate down and you bring your brain waves down it's all your heart is connected to your brain in that sense that senses the rhythm of if you it. that's why breathing and meditation is so huge because mm -hmm. you got to slow the heart rate down in order for it to you know that vibrate get that vibrational frequency to where you want it and then that in turn goes and affects your brain and causes your brain waves to go down. So that's to, why when we have anxiety and our heart rate is out of control, it sends that alert to your brain to panic. Right. Mm -hmm. And that the only way to truly achieve higher levels of consciousness is if you can get your breathing down mm -hmm. and get your, your heart rate down to a very low. I mean, if you think of some of the most enlightened people in the world, you think of, you know, like Buddhist monks, for example, mm -hmm. and how they can just go out and sit for Hours. endless amounts of time yeah. days, days even yeah. and just be in this meditative state and they're in that it's incredible they're in that either theta or probably even above that the delta state which is like basically like a deep sleep type of, of state of consciousness i wonder how your perception of time works it, you know do they even care that they're spending hours like to me that sounds crazy like, well to I them it could feel like they're in doing that for years but in reality, it's only, you know, 10 minutes or so that's gone by. Oh, wow. So maybe it feels longer Time for them. Well, that's Damn. the thing. So that that's you brought intense. up a great point that once you, you know, tune yourself, you get into that four to seven hertz frequency, you get your brain into hemi-sync through this gateway experience. That's that's essentially what is what's happening is you're transcending space, time, and you're able to complete you know time becomes an illusion it becomes absolutely irrelevant just like what we talked about in the time travel episode time is an illusion it's all relative it's all based on the perception so once we break out of that you break out of the matrix you know a lot of people say <laughs> yeah you are able to then no, totally be completely free mm -hmm. and travel to where you want to go and and do what you want to do mm -hmm. in this you know other dimension other plane of existence i think there's a reason why this stuff is so hidden because it could be so useful to humanity obviously right but it's not yeah. talked about or right. made mainstream i guess you could say because why would they want us raising our consciousness which as is a group just wild because like einstein was working on mm -hmm. so many theories that directly support all this stuff mm -hmm. and it just seems like it's all kind of fallen yeah. by the wayside when that it's really i mean yeah put your conspiracy caps on but it's like <laughs> you really wonder why it, this is clearly so mm -hmm. good for us mm -hmm. it's so good for our minds and so good for our consciousness that why isn't it being taught everywhere why isn't meditation a part of every school across the world like why isn't especially this especially if they have the information and they're seriously doing research on it and have been for so long why right. is it not released i think that's really hard to wrap your mind around why why do the people at the top not want us to thrive well i feel like there's a million reasons one of the ones there is that a million pops reasons. off the top of my head is like a lot of people if you read some people's stories they claim that meditation and being able to drop into a state of hypnosis cured their diseases yes like some people are like i was had stage four cancer and mm -hmm. was told I had two months left or whatever. And I was able to literally like manifest and meditate my way out of cancer. And not saying that, that, that that's possible for everyone, but if it is possible even at all, like there goes someone's need for chemo and there goes someone's need to go see a doctor and there goes someone's need to go to the pharmacy and right. be tied to the pharmacy forever. And like, if we can figure out how to like heal ourselves, you know, I use that term very loosely, but you, yeah. you understand what I mean. Yeah. It's just a concept. You're right. It's just up. a concept. You're course. not saying, no, yes, I'm not saying can we heal. can heal ourselves. Obviously yeah. not. Like I believe in medicine, but I think it can be used and manipulated in the sense that like we feel a little bit helpless and hopeless unless we are relying on ph pharmaceutical industry, mm -hmm. you know, doctors and 
Yeah, I know well, it's a little bit controversial, yeah. but it's just an yeah, idea. It is a little bit, but no, I totally see what you're saying. I think it's a good point. And I mean, yeah, some things are controversial, but we mm-hmm. got to talk about well, that. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a capitalistic society. Right. Exactly. I mean, everything revolves around money. Right. It's it a money driven world. And that is where we went wrong is that we put place too much on, you know, the dollar bill and not enough on ourselves mm-hmm. and on and on human beings and evolution. You know, we really like kind of stunted our evolution in a way when the you know whole industrial age happened mm-hmm. and you know going all the way back to the five families and the banking system and when they set all of that all of that up you know that that was really when all of this kind of just got left behind because i mean none of this is new like hypnosis uh transcendental uh meditation going to biofeedback all of these things have been known for a very long time i was gonna say if anything it's our Western medicine that's new. This shit's been around for thousands right. of years. Right. We just that's like a a abandon point. it all together. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. we, you know, and people are always like, oh, you, you, you believe in Eastern medicine and stuff like this. doctors have this negative, uh, you know, a lot of them have a negative connotation when you bring up Eastern medicine or you, you know, you say I go to a, a holistic place or I go and that's see, you know, a Chinese medicine uh, practitioner and they just kind of scoff at it because literally i mean many of our our you know medical doctors out there they go to medical school they're they're learning by these standards that are set forth by all these corporations and organizations that are run by the government i mean i don't don't want to get too deep into it but (laughs) but it's very you know from that perspective it's like it makes a lot of sense why they wouldn't want this to be known because Mm -hmm. clearly this shit works i mean even if the u.s army was spending millions yeah. of dollars to to investigate this and research. research it why not why not even like really put it out there and make it super available if mm-hmm. it is proven to help us in right. such a why magnificent not? way why not why not no they would rather keep that those secrets to themselves and use it for their own good and furthering their agenda and obviously mm-hmm. the military their ultimate goal is to create a super soldier we already know this is a fact they're working on that right fun. now trying to create the ultimate fighting machine. I mean, it, it seems like stuff out of movies, but that's literally what's happening is there. That's what and they're the trying to develop. Yeah. Be a thing. Yeah. Psychic have a bunch of like psychics battle it out against each <laughs> oh other. Like, God. damn, <laughs> imagine that, like using their psychic abilities Maybe. to invade each other's mm-hmm. minds and, and go to the astral <laughs> really level wild, and yeah. start like fighting each other. Like who knows? I mean, that, that could be, and that could even be happening right now for all we know. I mean, <laughs> Why not? They could already have if they whole were divisions doing all of this people. stuff so long ago so in the eighties. Yeah, and it's it was way before that too yeah. that they've been you know looking into things like this. So if that was a hundred years ago, then imagine what they're doing if they have information from a hundred years in the future, mm-hmm. and what they point. could be doing without our knowledge. And I love people like, oh, that's there's no way they're doing that. We would know about it. Why you would know, you so know many that? people so act like that? They're like, that's oh, the it's classic like, line. We would know. We would know. We, would we know. know everything, guys. There's we know no everything. Way. They don't We're keep secrets. All. No secrets. No secrets. We're Full American citizens. The government works for us. <laughs> yeah. It's like, obviously, there's a line and, you know, it's just until you learn the fact that the Department of Defense hadn't been audited, their budget hadn't been audited ever until recently. Yeah. And they au- audited that shit and they realized that there is millions and millions and millions of dollars missing from the budget. They have no idea where it went. There's no no traces anywhere. Yeah. I mean, they're literally above the law. Yes. Like, oh, is that are. not yes. the definition? So all mm-hmm. these people are like, oh, no, because we would know about it. No, you wouldn't because they're literally above the law. They can do whatever the fuck they want. There's no, there's no consequences. Yeah. How about the fact that, you know, things came out the day on, you know, September 10th, 2001, mm-hmm. a bunch of information came out about the military budget mm-hmm. the day before. before. So many things. Uh, interesting. So many question marks. And a lot of people like to just chalk it up as like, oh, it's just a bizarre coincidence. Or There's so many. No, we would guys, know. We've got to think Our government wouldn't lie to us. Yeah. They would never tell us something that isn't true. Of course they would. That is the biggest load of bullshit. I can't believe how many people truly believe that and trust our, our government so much Mm -hmm. like i understand some trust totally i mean there's a there's a line for sure for me personally yeah but i mean i also question i like to question a lot of it especially after i've like yeah we've talked a lot about big pharma today and i want to get fully into that on another episode i'd really like to talk about my experience personally um just because i had a terrible experience with western medicine i'm not saying it's all 
Yeah, I, I still, no, like you said, good, I believe in science, I believe in medicine. There's great doctors out there, amazing I, nurses yes. out there. By no means are we ever meaning to discount any of those people or what they do. Cause but we shouldn't discount truly Eastern either. Right. I think there's a, like, there's good things to come out of both sides. Why can't we fuse the both? Right, Why can't right. we put our heads together? Why can't we take what we've known for oh, thousands so much to of say on years? This. I have so much to say on this. <laughs> And, and, you know, ancient cultures are literally doing, you know, know, these things. Especially if this kind of stuff can really help your mental health. So after hearing all this, you're probably wondering, like, how do we how do we do this? How do we get into this hemi sink? And what's interesting is that in these documents, they referred to something called the clicked out effect, which I actually really love that term because it makes a lot of sense. You're like clicking out of reality you're clicking out of the matrix and you're entering this whole whole other realm. And there's actually some really interesting diagrams uh, within these documents, which we'll, we'll put on the screen for you if you're watching. But according to these documents, there's a threshold you reach with energy or your brain waves, and they call this the clicked out effect. And it's actually called Planck's distance. So it's when things vibrate at a certain frequency, they reach a distance where they eventually click out. And this distance they found is 10 to the negative 33 centimeters. And they say once you reach this threshold, that's when things really start to get kind of trippy for you, kind of an Alice in Wonderland type of uh, effect or experience happens. Um, and in order to do this, obviously meditation, binaural beats help get your brain into hemiseek in order to actually go beyond yourself. But at the very core of the gateway experience is really uh, the, a series of albums called the gateway experience. So the Monroe Institute put out this training program, which I think they're still selling for, it's actually quite expensive, but um, I did find a link of, of the, uh, some of the different tracks on the album. So if you wanted to try it out, we'll put that down for you. It was on Reddit. Um, so it's really at the core, a, at at home experience where you listen to these different albums and you know, they start very much like we said with a guided meditation and they slowly ease you into it. And over time you go through these different albums and slowly you're, you're starting to train your brain to go to these lower frequencies in order to hopefully achieve out of body experiences. And from what I saw, it's kind of a, a mixed mixed bag out there on people's experiences with this particular uh, method. A lot of people said that they, you know, did this for quite a while and they just ended up ditching it because they just felt like they were dealing with really bad headaches all the time. Like oh, it almost wow. felt like it made them sick in a way. Hmm. And I've heard that heard that from people just who do, you know, listen to binaural beats a lot as they can, you know, and, and plus, you got to make absolute sure that you're getting the right frequency because frequencies, I mean, if somebody puts the wrong frequency in there, I could really like mess with your your hearing and your your brain. Like if yeah. it's too high or too low, like there's some frequencies we can't even hear. And if those are in there, how would that affect you? So it's it's really kind of tough. But with the Gateway Experience and their their CDs, you can absolutely be sure certain that you're going to be tuning your brain to uh, the right frequencies over time. So we can play a little bit of of some of the gateway experience official uh, media here. As you listen to the sound of ocean surf, move your body into a more relaxed position. Release any tensions or strain points. Move into whatever position is best for you. Okay, so here's the, here's the thing with the uh, videos that are on YouTube and many of the downloads with uh, the Gateway Experiences. If you listen to the audio, you're supposed to only hear, I, I think it's, Bob's voice actually that's that's on it but you're only supposed to hear his voice out of one headphone it's very important when you do this experience that you're only hearing certain sounds out of of mm -hmm. certain headphones you shouldn't be hearing it out of both and whoever uploaded this uh <laughs> to YouTube and saying that this is authentic gateway experiences is, is in, indeed wrong because these sounds are actually coming and his voice is coming out of both headphones because it yeah. should move between them because that's the only way that this works is if your both of your ears are hearing different frequencies they can't be sounding uh together and i mean i, I think it makes sense that this isn't working properly because of course 
to get it to work properly, you got to buy it from them and oh, you know yeah. pay the full full amount of money to get the actual. How much is it? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I, from what I've read, it's like a couple thousand dollars. It's like pretty expensive. That is yeah. fucking absurd. Yeah, it's <laughs> and it's sad. kind of expensive. So that just proves our point even more. Mm -hmm. They don't want people to have stuff like this. Mm -hmm. This should be free, right? I know, I know. So yeah, because all the videos pretty much you hear on YouTube with binaural beats are are wrong. So irritating. They're not even working correctly. But the last thing I wanted to bring up uh, that was kind of interesting from this document was the the fact that the actual document stops at page 24 and then picks up on 27. Uh, 25 and 26 appear to be completely removed mm. from the release files. So there's been a lot of people like speculating about what, what this means, why did they do this? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm kind of interested too because when you go to this page of, of the documents, and we'll put the link for the uh, CIA library so you can actually look at these documents yourselves but in this particular pages they appear to be talking about theology and religion and going into this idea of christianity's uh, metaphysical view of the holy spirit the holy trinity um talking about that and it goes into wow. some other religious concepts and um i i think they're kind of referring to just the ability to reach a level of enlightenment a lot of people, some people call it Christ consciousness. So uh, it's just kind of another word to put, to coin a term for a lot of people believe Jesus was an enlightened one. Uh, even people that aren't necessarily like traditional Christians, a lot of people believe that Jesus himself was much like Buddha, was much like Some people Muhammad, think he was an alien. You know, yeah, I think he was an, <laughs> yeah, some people do think he was an alien. Man. But yeah. a lot of people think that Jesus was truly an enlightened individual. Like he, he did, you know, his consciousness was on another level than than the rest of of, of us. So, the, the this term Christ consciousness has been coined to that, and so hmm. a lot of people think that maybe there's they discovered some things about you know the me, the metaphysical realm when it comes to consciousness and how that relates to religious ideas. And some people theorize that maybe they they found evidence that supports the actual reality of the Holy Trinity, and that that is indeed. You know real it's not just this theological idea that you know this love this idea is actually exists and it exists in this way i mean there's a lot of a lot of different theories there's other theories that perhaps they got into like you know they were doing stuff with uh, magic even and, and dealing with different rituals and different things out. like that and figuring out how to manipulate uh things metaphysically through the use of spells and magic and and things like that so very very interesting stuff i mean everybody's kind of got their different take on it and i think some people have actually tried to file a freedom of information act request in order to get those files uh, those missing pages so that we can actually see what's on them we should be able to because it's very interesting that they just kind of you know conveniently leave certain things out they they'll black things out that. all the time and you wonder what's mm -hmm. what they're hiding and why they didn't include why don't it. they want people to know clearly it was something clearly it was something important i mean yeah. if they're going to take it out so very interesting stuff, though. I it mean, is. that's kind of the gateway experience in a nutshell. I mean, it's a very basic it's overview of it. Huge There's a topic, lot yeah. to it. There's a lot of like those documents. If you dive into it, you could be reading them for a whole day. And they're very complicated. Very complicated. Lots of science, mm -hmm. lots of, of very technical terms in it. But hopefully we kind of broke it down for you guys a little bit. To yeah. If you're it. wondering or maybe heard about it and was wondering what it is, it's a it's a training program for unlocking your consciousness to achieve out of body experiences and other forms of reality. So. Is it real? I don't know. Should we try? Maybe. I kind of want to try it. Yeah, we could try to do some binaural meditations. Maybe we'll have like a binaural Transcendental meditations as well, where you repeat mantras. is supposed to be a hugely successful oh. way to do it as yes, well. Yes, I've heard a lot about that. And a lot of this kind of just reminds me of, you know, other people out there who have their own take on, you know, achieving higher levels of consciousness. I know we talk about them all the time, but Dr. Stephen Greer, his CE5, Close Encounters oh. of the Fifth Kind, his protocols, he created uh, have a lot to do with uh, transcendental meditation in order to achieve higher levels of consciousness where you can actually interact with extraterrestrials or other worldly beings. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we shall see, though. Pretty interesting. It is. It's really cool stuff. Let us know what you guys think of the Gateway experience. Are you going to try it? Have you already tried it? Have you had any experience with binaural beats? Do you use them? You yeah. know, in your daily life. I'm really curious about all of this. Yeah. Or any recommendations you have for us. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'd be interested to see what, if you are extremely 
uh, experience with binaural beats and binaural beats meditations if you have any recommendations for us to give it cool. a try so yeah definitely. really interesting stuff though man yeah. i mean the idea that our government and military and stuff is all very interested in this is uh mm -hmm. is both cool but it's also scary at the same time <laughs> it is we don't a know lot of why. what they work on is scary to think about why why do they want to have this information why are they looking into this and they pro and assuming they already do have this knowledge and technology it's like what are they doing what could they be yeah. doing like there's probably so many things they're doing that if we knew we would be absolutely just like mind blown and probably scared to death we'd be like what <laughs> i know they're doing what they're yeah, sending this people is just the stuff that's out there imagine what yeah. they keep What's secret classified? you know and Truly let us know if there's any other, you know, document dumps that you guys want us to kind of look into and or, uh, talk you know, about secret projects that have been declassified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find all this stuff so interesting. I do too. Because it's like real. It's like <laughs> as real as it it's gets. like real. But <laughs> yeah, real, I mean, man. there's some evidence behind it. Yeah, it's taking Especially seriously. This. Mm -hmm. Meditation it's has really cool scientific stuff. evidence to back up that it works. It's very cool. So meditate more. We can all do that. I think bridge the gap of science and spirituality. That's Boom. right. But hopefully you enjoyed this episode of the Mile Hard Podcast. If you did, uh, drop us a like on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube as well and on Apple Podcasts. That would really help us out. But until next time. Oh, and don't forget to go to higherlovewellness.com yes. and pick up Check your products today. Yes. <laughs> But that's it for us today, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Always make sure to take your mind a mile higher and we will see you next week.